What's going on guys? Today we're going to be talking about how to create the Orton effect and how you can use it to make your photos look a little bit more dreamy here in Photoshop. So let's get into it. What's happening guys, my name is Brendan from Outbound Media and you can find me on Instagram at Burnwells. Before I get started, I just wanted to let anyone who's new here know that I make new Photoshop tutorials every single Wednesday, so if that's something you'd be into, make sure to hit that subscribe button. So today we're going to be talking about the Orton effect and how you can use it to make your images look a lot more dreamy here in Photoshop. Essentially what the Orton effect is, is it overlays a brighter version of your image that is a little bit blurred. It sort of gives the areas that it's affecting a little bit of a glow and sort of this dreamy fairy tale look. But enough of me talking about it, let's just learn how to do it. So once you open your image in Photoshop, you'll have a background layer here. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to duplicate that layer by pressing Command J. So now you have a background copy. So what I'm going to rename this to is Orton Blur. Now this is the layer that we want to create our Orton effect on. So what we have to do is we have to blur this layer and then we have to clip a curves adjustment layer onto our blur layer here and then we can blend it into our background layer. Now that sounds a little bit complicated but I promise you it is not. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to add our blur to our Orton blur layer. So we're going to go up here to filter, down here to blur, and then Gaussian blur. Now from there you don't want to go too crazy with your pixel radius because then you see that things start to look a little bit weird. So what I like to do is I go all the way down to zero and then I just work my way up until I find a blur that I am happy with. So the higher the blur radius, the more of an effect this technique will have. So in this case, I don't want my effect to be super, super aggressive. So I'm just going to put it around 7.8 and click OK. So now what I want to do is I want to boost the highlights and take down the shadows just a little bit in this image. So like I said before, is I'm just going to go up here and grab my curves adjustment layer clip it to my Orton blur layer. So now it's only affecting my Orton blur layer. And I'm going to raise up my highlights just like that. And I'm going to bring down my shadows. Now I usually just go back down to pretty much normal, but you can add a little bit more contrast to there if you'd like. Now from here, I'm going to click down on my Orton blur. And what I want to do is I want to blend this into my background layer, the one that is not blurred. So what I'm going to do to do that is I'm just going to go here to my layer blending mode, and then I'm just going to go down here to screen. So now you see that it just brightened everything up and it looks really bad. But here's what we have to do. So now we'll go here to our fill slider and I'm just going to bring my fill all the way down to zero. So then I can see what our original image looks like. Now I'm going to slowly bring up my fill slider and so it's adding just a little bit more of that Orton blur the more I slide up the slider. So as you see, the further up I bring the slider, if I just zoom in, you see this sort of dreamy glow that it has given us. So if I just turn off this Orton blur here, you can see the difference there. It's very slight, but it has a really nice sort of fairy tale glow, whatever you want to call it. From here, if you want it to affect the entire image, then you're pretty much done at this point and you just adjust your fill slider to where you want and then you're good. So in this case, I only want to affect the waterfall, the river and her. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a layer mask to my Orton blur layer and I'm just going to press command I to invert that layer mask so now everything is invisible there. I'm going to grab my brush tool and with a white brush I'm just going to paint in the areas that I want my Orton blur to be affecting. So on the edges of the waterfall, of course in the mist, and then on my person here, and just like that. So now by doing that I've manually told Photoshop where I want this effect to be taking place. So if I just turn this Orton blur layer on and off you can see the difference that it makes. It sort of has added this dreamy glow to our image without being over the top and in your face. It just sort of adds a nice sort of stylized look to your image. Now this is a technique that you can use for pretty much any style of photography you do, whether it be landscapes, portraits, sports, whatever you want to do, it can really add a cool effect to your images. Anyways guys, that is it. That's how you create the Orton blur effect here in Photoshop. If you're wondering where I took this image, this was actually taken in Whistler, BC at Brandywine Falls, which is a super epic waterfall and if you ever get the chance to visit it, I would highly recommend it. If you want to see any more images from this waterfall, then just visit my website at outboundmedia.net or you can find me on Instagram at Burnwells. Again, my name is Brandon from Outbound Media and I hope to see you back here next Wednesday for another new Photoshop tutorial. See you then. I don't want